himself in his death and his resurrection. Oh, what is going to be? So you know the first thing that Philip does, he goes to fight with Nathaniel. Now there's a good disciple. He understands part of the meaning of that word. He wants to do something for a friend of his. He wants to bring to him somebody that he has never met before. Come! We have found him. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> who found who? Remember what I asked before? We have found him. The one of whom Moses and the prophets spoke of. And of course, Daniel knew exactly who he was talking about. The Messiah. Christ. We found him. He is Jesus, the son of Joseph of Nazareth. Of course, there have been a few people who don't want to listen to certain things, and when it says the son of Joseph, they want to think to themselves, ah, that takes care of the virgin birth. No, not at all. He was just simply the legal son of Joseph, but he was not his son. What was important to the words of Nathaniel? <laughs> what good thing can come out of Nazareth? It was a relatively new town at that time. It had no real importance. Not like Bethlehem. <coughs> What's there? Details words. Come! See! By the way, those are two imperatives in the Greek. Come and see. And I can just see him pointing his finger in the air with an emphasis on his voice because of the excitement of what he had found. So Nathaniel goes with him. Jesus sees him coming. there is no deceit, no guile, no treachery. Now there's an accolade. How many people have been known who have not in some way or another been a little bit treacherous, a little bit filled with guile, you know, and deceit? Oh, I think we've all done it. But what the Lord saw in that man's heart and his character was something very special. He said it loud enough so that Nathaniel was on the way to meet him, heard the words. How is it that you know me? And Jesus answered, revealed to Nathaniel, whom Jesus really loved. I saw you sitting under the big tree. Now that was a good place, by the way, for people that lived at that time on a hot day to sit, to pray, to contemplate, whatever, but to get out of the sun because the leaves were so thick on those trees, so they just sat there and just cooled off for a little while, and that's where Nathaniel was when Bill found him. I saw you sitting in the big tree. Simple words. And yet it revealed to Nathaniel, how could he have possibly done this to us? You are the Son of God. The King of Israel.
Philip brought Nathaniel. To the most important person in his life. The Son of God. Isn't that what we as disciples want to do? Don't we want to reach out to our friends, to our neighbors? Come and see. Come and hear. Don't we want our neighbors and our friends, our relatives, to know this wondrous person who miles away could see somebody sitting under a fig tree? I was still coming there to be able to look into his heart to see what kind of a person he was. Only God could do those things. Too many congregations forget why they exist. <coughs> Measure now in the, sometimes I call them, especially when I was a certain counselor, the throes, the agonies of being without your own pastor. And you got to put up with guys like me from one Sunday to the next. Sometimes we forget why we're here. Why Jesus said to us, follow me. Why hasn't he reached out from, through history into our lives to the day we're baptized? My wife makes up a calendar every every Christmas for the whole family, for each each family. And she not only has their birthdays and their wedding anniversaries and other important dates on those calendars, but she also has the day of their baptism. The day you were reborn into the kingdom of God as a disciple of Christ. Join me to the Lord. And the very same mission in your heart and your mind as He has had for you to go and tell so that people can come and see what great things God has done for them in Christ Jesus and for you. We don't have any big trees here in Minnesota. It's kind of cool to go and sit in front of But in your times of contemplation and thought, please think to yourself, why did Jesus come into my life? And say, follow me. Why did he make me one of his disciples? So that I can bask in that wonderful gift without ever sharing it? Absolutely not. And some of this must start from within the congregation. I read just reading something yesterday in preparation for the sermon. And back in the year 2000, I want you to think about this for a moment. 56% of the babies that were baptized in the Lutheran Church in Missouri Synod never went to Sunday school and never were confirmed. 56% of them. I can only imagine that that number has grown. <coughs> you have a task. You've been joined to Christ to carry out that task. Bringing the Word of God into the lives of young people, even when their parents aren't doing their job. Reach out to your relatives, to your grandchildren, to your friends, to your co-workers, to your school friends. Let's be disciples joined to Christ for every reason. Amen. Now we have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and your minds in that one true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. <coughs>